myself sunil kalshetty assistant professor department of electronics engineering walchand institute of technology solapur today i am going to explain three phase half wave controlled rectifier learning outcome at the end of this session students can analyze three phase half wave controlled rectifier three phase half wave controlled rectifier operates from three phase ac supply voltage it provides higher dc output voltage it provides higher dc output power higher output voltage ripple frequency filtering requirements are simplified for smoothing out load voltage and load current so effect of this it requires less smoothing component so effect of this the size of filter is small these are extensively used in high power variable speed industrial dc drive this is the circuit diagram of three phase half wave control rectifier with purely resistive load it consists of three thyristors t1 t2 t3 the anode of t1 t2 t3 is connected to the phase a b and c and the cathode of t1 t2 t3 is connected to the one end of the load and the another end of the load is connected to the neutral terminal working in this circuit only one scr is conducting at any given time here no scr is trigger below 30 degree because it remains reverse bias by other conducting phase here below 30 degree the instantaneous value of previous phase is more so effect of this the minimum firing angle is 30 degree and we cannot apply the gate pulse below the 30 degree in this circuit va vb and vc are three phase voltages displaced by 120 degree during period pi by 6 to phi pi by 6 the instantaneous value of va is greater than vb and vc hence gate pulse is provided to t1 during period phi pi by 6 to 9 pi by 6 vb is greater than va and vc hence gate pulse is provided to t2 and during period 9 pi by 6 to 13 pi by 6 vc is greater than va and vb hence gate pulse is provided to t3 here t1 is triggered at omega t is equal to pi by 6 plus alpha t2 is triggered at omega t is equal to phi pi by 6 plus alpha and t3 is triggered at omega t is equal to 9 pi by 6 plus alpha each thyristor conducts for 120 degree or 2 pi by 3 radians with resistive load there are two modes of conduction continuous conduction mode and discontinuous conduction mode for the continuous conduction mode the firing angle is less than or equal to 30 degree and for discontinuous conduction mode the firing angle alpha is greater than 30 degree now assume the mode is the continuous conduction mode for this continuous conduction mode the value of alpha is less than or equal to 30 degree now assume that alpha is equal to 0 degree at pi by 6 plus alpha the pulse is applied to the t1 so effect of this the t1 conducts and the current flows through the t1 load source and back to the t1 as long as t1 conducts the phase van is appears across the load and the van is continuously conduct up to 5 pi by 
below the love the half circle the next pulse is available for the t2 so effect of this the t2 conducts and the t1 turns off natural commutation when t2 conducts the phase vbn appears across the load and the t2 continuously conduct up to 5 pi by 6 as long as t2 conducts the phase vbn appears across the load at 5 pi by 6 plus alpha the pulse is applied to the t3 so t3 conducts and when the t3 conducts the phase vcn is appears across the load for this mode the current flows through the converter continuously that's why the mode is the continuous conduction mode and here the continuously the current flows through the circuitry we assume alpha is equal to 30 degree again at pi by 6 plus alpha means at omega t is equal to 60 degree the pulse is applied to the t1 and when the t1 conducts the phase van appears across the load when t1 conducts the direction of current is source t1 load neutral back to the source and the t1 continuously conduct up to the end of the half cycle at omega t is equal to 5 pi by 6 plus alpha means that is omega t is equal to 180 degree the pulse is applied to the t2 and the vbn appears across the load and the t2 continuously conduct up to the 9 pi by 6 plus alpha at this point the next thyristor conducts and vcn appears across the load again for alpha is equal to 30 degree continuously current flows through the converter again that's why the mode is the continuous conduction mode what is the ripple frequency of three phase half wave controlled rectifier For this converter, for one complete cycle, three pulses are appears across the load. That's why the output ripple frequency is equal to three times fundamental frequency. So output ripple frequency is equal to three times Fs. Expression for average DC output voltage for continuous conduction mode. For this mode, the condition for alpha less than or equal to 30 degree. Vdc is equal to 3 upon 2 pi alpha plus 30 degree to 150 plus alpha V0 d omega t. Here, for one complete cycle, three pulses are appears and the length of one complete cycle is the 360 degree. That is why 3 upon 2 pi. And for this duration, alpha plus 30 to 150 plus alpha van appears across the load and the instantaneous value of van is equal to vm sin omega t now substitute this value in our main equation and after solving this we will get the vdc is equal to 3 root 3 vm upon 2 pi cos alpha now expression for average DC output voltage for discontinuous conduction mode. For this mode, the condition for alpha is greater than 30 degree. Here, T1 is triggered at omega t is equal to pi by 6 plus alpha and the T1 conducts from pi by 6 plus alpha to 180 degree and for this duration, the VAN appears across the load and the instantaneous value of VAN is equal to Vm sin omega t. T2 is triggered at omega t is equal to 
5 pi by 6 plus alpha and the T2 conducts from 150 degree plus alpha to 300 degree and when the T2 conducts Vbn appears across the load therefore V0 is equal to Vbn is equal to Vm sin omega t minus 120 degree here the phase B is lags behind by 120 degree. T3 is triggered at omega t is equal to 9 pi by 6 plus alpha and the T3 conducts from 270 degree plus alpha to 420 degree and in this duration Vcn appears across the load therefore Vcn is equal to Vm sin omega t minus 240 degree or Vm sin omega t plus 120 degree. Now for this conduction mode assume alpha is equal to 60 degree. Now at omega t is equal to pi by 6 plus alpha 60 degree means at omega t is equal to 90 degree apply the pulse to the T1 and when the T1 conducts the VAN appears across the load and the degree all the thyristors remains in the non-conducting state so current becomes 0 and the next pulse is available at pi pi by 6 plus alpha and T2 conducts when the T2 conducts VBN appears across the load and as long as T2 conducts the phase VBN appears across the load again at the end the T2 conduct the T2 turns off because of the natural commutation and the next pulse is available at 9 pi by 6 plus alpha here in this mode at the end of the half cycle thyristor turns off and the current becomes zero that's why the mode of the operation is the discontinuous conduction mode why this converter is called as a three pulse converter in this converter for one complete cycle three pulses are appears across the load that's why the name is the three pulse converter the expression for vdc vdc is equal to 3 upon 2 pi alpha plus 30 degree to 180 degree v0 d omega t for this mode van appears across the load therefore van is equal to vm sin omega t so substitute this value in our main equation therefore vdc is equal to 3 upon 2 pi alpha plus 30 degree to 180 degree Vm sin omega t d omega t and after solving this we will get the Vdc is equal to 3 Vm upon 2 pi 1 plus cos 30 plus alpha. These are references. Thank you.